Is red light therapy an overhyped fad that does more harm than good? Or is it a powerful tool for treating eye conditions and even reversing vision loss? There's some really interesting research showing how red light therapy can help your eyes, but there are some scams and serious safety issues you need to be aware of. We'll break down both the benefits and risks of red light therapy backed up by research, as well as guidelines for getting the best results safely. But first of all, what exactly is red light therapy and how does it work? This is a therapeutic technique using specific wavelengths of light for a variety of medical benefits. It uses red light with wavelengths around 630 to 670 nanometers, or near infrared light with wavelengths between 810 and 850 nanometers. Low levels of these wavelengths can penetrate through tissues to stimulate the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, without generating too much heat. Building up too much heat could damage cells. That mitochondria stimulation of red light therapy produces more of something called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is the energy source for cellular processes like rapidly repairing and regenerating tissues. That regeneration of tissue can be very useful for a wide variety of things. So red light therapy is used a lot for stimulating collagen and elastin production, which makes your skin look smoother and younger, treating acne, reducing pain, stimulating hair growth, and helping athletes recover faster. But there's research suggesting that it could improve your vision and slow down or even reverse the progression of serious eye issues. And lots of eye issues are becoming increasingly common because of factors like people spending more time staring at screens and an aging population. Let's break down the three ways that research shows red light therapy can help your eye health. Way number one, retinal health. The retina is the light sensitive layer at the back of your eyes. Your retinas getting messed up is one of the main factors that causes people to lose their vision as they get older and even go blind. This can happen through macular degeneration, where the center of your vision can disappear, or diabetic retinopathy, where having too much sugar in your blood because of diabetes damages blood vessels in your retina, which causes blurry vision and eye floaters. Diabetic retinopathy actually ends up affecting 26% of diabetics. First of all, your retinas are very rich in mitochondria. In addition to red light therapy stimulating that mitochondria to repair and regenerate itself, it also boosts antioxidant levels and reduces inflammation. But how exactly do those things impact retinal conditions like diabetic retinopathy or macular degeneration? In addition to just getting older and things in your body starting to break down naturally, one of the main causes of macular degeneration is chronic inflammation. And there aren't really other good treatment options for macular degeneration. You can get these expensive injections going straight into your eyes, but that really doesn't sound like fun. But red light therapy reduces that chronic inflammation and lets the damaged macula, the center of your retina, better regenerate itself. A 2020 study showed that 670 nanometer red light improved photoreceptor performance in macular degeneration patients ranging from 28 to 72 years old. Interestingly, it mainly improved their shorter wavelength vision, so helping them better see colors like blue as opposed to longer wavelengths like orange or red. A 2023 study showed that macular degeneration patients had their vision significantly improved after five weeks of red light therapy using three different wavelengths, 590, 660, and 850 nanometers. You know this eye test chart you look at when you're at the doctor's office? The study participants improved those vision test results up to five and a half letters, meaning that they could see one more line down than they used to after five weeks of red light therapy. But let's not forget about diabetic retinopathy. The research is a little less advanced here than it is for macular degeneration, but preliminary studies show that red light therapy can reduce retinal damage from diabetic retinopathy because of how it reduces oxidative stress, which is an imbalance of antioxidants and unstable atoms called free radicals, as well as inflammation. All right, helping with your retina health was way one out of three that red light therapy can help improve your eye health. Way number two is helping with dry eyes. Dry eye syndrome is a really common condition where your eyes don't produce enough tears or the tears they produce aren't the right consistency. It results in millions of people having irritated and red eyes, blurry vision, and light sensitivity. 
A 2023 study showed that red light therapy dramatically reduced dry eye symptoms by increasing participants' lipid layer thickness. That's the film on top of your tears, and it's super important for having your tears properly moisturize your eyes and just keep your eyes healthy. Another 2023 study showed that eye light masks, which are specifically made for treating dry eyes, led to really good outcomes. Three sessions were used every two weeks. The meibomian gland, which is responsible for creating oil on the eye surface that prevents water evaporation, became healthier during these tests. Let's talk about the third way that red light therapy helps with your eye health before addressing how not everything is magical and perfect using this kind of technique. Red light therapy can slow down or even reverse the progression of nearsightedness or myopia. More than 40% of adults have nearsightedness and it's one of the main reasons people need glasses and contacts. Nearsightedness means that your eyes are too strong. Instead of taking in light from far away and focusing that down to a point on your retinas, they focus that light too soon. That spreads out those spots on your retina, making your vision blurrier. People with nearsightedness can see things up close to them, more in focus than things that are further away. And the rates of nearsightedness are actually increasing, partially due to the fact that people spend a lot more time growing up, staring at phones and other devices close to their faces. So your eye kind of gets stuck adjusting to focusing on things that close. And as that nearsightedness develops, the eyes become elongated, stretching out and making light focus before it's supposed to, before it reaches the retina. Two studies from 2024 show that in kids ages 8 to 13, and then in 4 to 13 in the second study, eye elongation and the progression of nearsightedness were stopped and even reversed. A 2023 meta-analysis showed that kids had their nearsightedness improved by 0.68 diopters of glasses power after six months of red light therapy. And they're just looking at a desktop red LED setup at home for three minutes twice a day. So if your kid's vision is getting worse, red light therapy might help them recover the vision that they've lost. Another 2022 study found that red light at 650 nanometers works better than atropine eye drops for preventing nearsightedness. Everything we just talked about sounds amazing. It sounds like red light therapy is a magic bullet that addresses essentially all eye issues. But red light therapy being used in this way is still in the early stages of research, and there are some risks and misconceptions that you should be aware of. Let's break down three potential risks and misconceptions. Number one is wavelength specificity. The therapeutic wavelength range for eye health is narrow, being 660 to 670 nanometer red light or 810 to 850 nanometer near infrared light. Light wavelengths outside of this range might not have the same benefits and might even hurt your eyes. Other wavelengths could build up much more heat, which damages cells, even if they are also stimulating mitochondria. Risk number two is the risk of overuse. Everything in life needs to be done in moderation. While the specific wavelength ranges we talked about minimize heat buildup, there still could be some thermal effects, which could grow and damage sensitive retinal tissues. A safe limit is typically under three to five minutes a day. The third and final risk is misleading consumer devices. Many over-the-counter red light therapy devices don't meet scientific standards for wavelength precision or intensity, and there's a lack of FDA regulation for eye-specific devices. The random red light mask popping up on your Instagram might not necessarily be controlled or safe. A lot of the red light devices that you see out there are intended for use on your skin, so they could have different wavelength and power levels uh, that wouldn't be healthy for your eyes. They would likely come with a warning telling you to not shine those devices into your eyes. Listen to those warnings. And in general, the short and long-term effects of red light therapy for eye health aren't really well understood because this research, again, is so new. But there are some guidelines for safely using red light therapy for eye health. I like my list of three things, so here's another list of three guidelines. Number one, using the right light duration and frequency of use. The recommended dose is two to three minutes of daily exposure over several weeks. Studies have shown that this is sufficient to stimulate mitochondrial repair without overstimulation, you know, building up that heat that we talked about. Avoiding non-research grade devices that may exceed safe light intensities is definitely recommended. 
And speaking of devices, guideline number two is choosing the right devices. Almost all the studies I referenced earlier were using custom or prototype devices that aren't designed yet for consumer use. While some red light therapy devices are FDA certified for use on your skin, none are currently FDA certified for eye use as of making this video. That will probably happen soon though because of all the super promising research in this area, but you can't just shine anything into your eyes. This video is not giving specific medical advice to any one person, just sharing the findings from this research. If you wanted to look into this in more detail, I recommend starting in a place like lighttherapyinsiders.com. In general, iSafe devices would have wavelengths between 630 to 670 nanometers or 810 to 850 nanometers and a radiance under five milliwatts per centimeter squared. And guideline number three, consult with professionals who know what they're doing. Talk to your eye doctor about whether red light therapy could be a potential treatment for your specific eye conditions. This is essential for patients with any pre-existing eye conditions like macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. Have any of you tried red light therapy for eye health? If so, I'd love to hear how your experiences were, and I'm sure the other people watching this video would care about that, so please leave a comment down below. Thanks.